Amen. Um, we are going to get this service started. I want to make just an announcement real quick. Um, on Thursday, we went as a couples group uh, to see a movie called Show Me the Father. And um, I don't know, if, how many of y'all have seen like the movie Courageous or War Room or so th it's made from the su same people. It's, it's from the Kendrick Brothers. But I I'll say this, that, that this movie um, probably impacted me more than any of the other movies that they've made. Um, and if y'all haven't gone to see it, I would encourage you to see it. Actually, what, I'm, what we're wanting to do... Um, Today is we're not going to have prayer tonight at 5. Instead, I'm wanting to encourage us as a fellowship to go at 340 and watch it together. Um, the, the youth are going. Um, I've looked at uh, yesterday. I, I got the tickets. Um, so far, it's just the youth. <laughs> I mean, in terms of the theater. So... We've got tickets for like 10 people, and there's still a whole theater that's, that's left. And so if you can go at 340, I think that would be a cool thing for us to do as a fellowship together, uh, to watch that movie together. And one of the, uh, one of the things about this movie uh, slash documentary is if you, if you attended the Sunday school class on um, going from spiritual slavery to spiritual sonship, it's a wonderful tie-up to that. Um, and so if you can make it, I want to encourage you to go to it. I I'll say this, and I'm going to show the, the trailer just as an extra move. Um, it speaks to fatherhood. It speaks to relationship with the Heavenly Father. It speaks about being a spiritual father. If you're not, if you're not a biological father, it speaks just to the whole gamut of what does that mean to have God as Father, and what does it mean to, for dads. And so it's just, it's very impactful. But I want to play a, vi a, a trailer just to kind of hopefully bait you in. <laughs> so, yeah. Haven't I been a good father? I need somebody to show me. You're pushing all the buttons that men want to hear the dads. All of us have a fatherhood story. My dad was my hero growing up. A father was somebody who disappointed you. To have my father proud was my sole purpose of playing football. I want to make a difference in the lives of young people the way my father made a difference in my life. We put a representation of our father in all of our movies. I prayed for me and my brother and my mom to get through this night. I think we lived in seven different houses, kind of running from my dad. I started losing my ability to walk. We didn't realize the war that was going on inside of them. And wishing that I could just die. Lord, why didn't you give me a dad I could call? Because I need wisdom right now. I knew that I wasn't prepared to be anybody's mom. I was doing the right thing for him. And I panicked. And Sherman says, man, listen, calm down. It is a beautiful thing to have a child. This is why I do what I do. For guys like that. I mean, it was like the hair on the back of my neck is standing up. She said, I can tell that you already love her. And I did. I would get asked about family history. I didn't have any answers because I didn't know. Did you have a baby in 1972 in Allegheny County? She says back, yes, um, as is her. I'm stunned. He's real. He's really out there. And this is really him. This is really him. In the Bible, the blessing was everything. I declare that you are a beloved son in whom we are well pleased. You're pushing all the buttons that men want to hear their dad say. It was the first time I had been called out like that. He was that first man that paid attention to me. He was treating me like a dad would. Your perfect father in heaven can change the trajectory of your life. It's like the light came through. And I wept till I couldn't weep anymore. You are unconditionally loved. Haven't I been a good father? I need somebody to show me.
So if you can come today at 3.40, that would be wonderful. For the youth, I think we're going to meet here, what time? 3 o'clock. What's that? No, I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah, just let's come. <laughs> no, it's at Regal. So it's at Regal High Theater there. So at 3.40 it starts. Let's stand. Um, I want us to, I'm going to kind of give you a, a taste of what the message is this morning because it's it's coming out of Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 but I want to read this to us as we enter into a time of worship um, but I want us to bow our heads because I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask two questions and I don't want us looking around at each other to see I want us just to bow our heads. And here are the two questions. If you are wanting revival, I want you to raise your hand. If you are wanting revival, raise your hand. Okay. If... If you are wanting revival in your life, in your personal life, raise your hand. Okay. I just want to read this to you because I believe those two questions are so important for each one of us to answer as we enter into this service. And here is... Here's the launch to this service. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Which is your spiritual worship. And so that, the whole understanding of even us gathering right now and presenting our bodies, if you are wanting revival for yourself, right now it's really important how you're presenting yourself before the Lord. Is your mind, is your heart stayed on Him? or Is there a willingness right now within you to, as you present yourself to surrender to what He wants of you in this time. Father in heaven, I pray right now. I, I come before you, Lord, and, and I present myself before you. I present my thoughts, my heart, my will before you, Lord God. And Father, I pray where, where someone may be even struggling, what does that mean to, to present our bodies as a living and holy sacrifice? I, I am praying that right now there would be, even as we enter into this time of worship, that you would teach us what that means. What that looks like. That you, your spirit would move. That Holy Spirit, you would have access to every soul in here as we present ourselves to you, the Almighty, the one who was and who is and who is to come. Father, would you make yourself known? We thank you, Lord, for what you want to do in this time. In the name of Jesus, all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's worship the God who is mighty to save and who's great. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God forevermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, our God, he holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. 
There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We'll shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Because he hung upon that cross. And he rose from the grave. Our God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. We were the beggars. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Because we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We were forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. Oh, we'll shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. Yes, Lord, we bless you this morning. We come into your court singing and giving you praise and worship, Lord. And we know, Lord, that you are coming soon, coming soon to take away your bride. Behold, he comes, rising on the clouds, shining sun had the trumpet call lift your voice it's a year of jubilee and out of zion's hill salvation comes these are the days of elijah declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword. Still we are the voice in the desert, crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call lift your voice it's a year to believe and out of zion till salvation comes and these are the days of ezekiel the dry bones becoming as flesh and these are the days of your servant, David, rebuilding the 
temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are the white as your world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. And that is all the salvation. Behold, behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. And that is I until salvation comes. There is no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year to believe, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like Son, at the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year to believe, and out of Zion till salvation come. Lift your voice, lift your voice. It's a year to believe, and out of Zion till salvation Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope and no place to begin. Your love made a way, let mercy come in. When death was arrested and my life began, ashes. Ashes would dream only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet learned to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom me faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace so free watches over me. You have made me new, now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. 
but then Jesus arose with our freedom in it. That's when death was arrested and my life began. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. Oh, we're free, free forever. We're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever. Amen. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, we're free, free forever. We're free. Chime join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever. Amen. When death was arrested and life, life began. When death was arrested and my life began, when death was arrested and my life began. Do you remember when you were arrested and new life came into your heart? Give him praise over that. He drew you. He saved you. He redeemed you. He initiated, we responded. Aren't we so thankful? Thank you, Lord. You are our living hope. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness saw through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I have forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that 
God sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you, Father. We're going to go into a time of prayer. In, in a minute uh, here just a second first I want to read to you a little preface for prayer and uh, it's found in Philippians 4 4 through 7 rejoice in the Lord always I will say it again rejoice let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Does someone have a request this morning? Yeah, you may be seated. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Well, it's good to see all of you here. I'm going to perhaps prime the pump with a request. Um, there's a co-worker that I have, and um, he's here in Midland, and his daddy and mom and sister and family are in Florida. And his dad got the COVID a while back. And he's still in the hospital, last I heard. And it's been a couple of months. And uh, his mom has already gone to the funeral home and made preparations and things and doing difficult things. And here's this young man that's uh, stuck here in Midland working. He can't get off all the time he needs to go see his dad while he's still living and uh, so he's wrestling with that and uh, he's he's a good Christian man the guy that's dying and his son and um, the the fellow I work with in, his name is Chris and uh, uh, he told me you know I asked him I said is your dad a Christian is he a believer he said oh yes and uh, I said, well, there's the good news right there. And um, I said, your dad is going to be healed. And um, that was really encouraging words to him. 
and he told me, he said, uh, my dad taught me everything I know. And I said, well, he taught you well. And so let's pray for his dad now. And uh, by the way, his dad does the same job that this young man does and that I do. He, does, he, he did the same thing for UPS for 20 or 30 years. And uh, he would still be working. <laughs> He's not retired yet. But his name is Gardy. G-A-R-D-Y. Lord, we just want to lift up Gardy to you as he lays in the hospital there in Florida. And um, God, we thank you that he is a believer. We thank you that he will be healed someday yonder. But Lord, as your children, we just ask that uh, you would give him time here to be with his his family, his kids, his grandkids, and that you would give his son Chris somehow time to see him again. And um, Lord, if that's possible, we ask that you would raise him up. Lord, I just uh, want to lift up Chris to you. I just pray you would uh, give him wisdom and comfort in this difficult situation. And... Um, Lord, I just pray he would rely on you totally for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Philip, I have a prayer request. Um, I would like for someone to pray for my older brother, Mike. He is um, in the hospital in San Angelo. He had um, really a mir miraculous heart surgery about a year ago, and it looks like he's had a stroke. He has use of his limbs, but he can't communicate, and they can't probably do my MRI until t tomorrow um, but he is in the hospital and I would just um, ask for prayers for him um, he says he when he, before his heart surgery he said he, he was ready to meet the Lord and um, so I'm thankful for that because we really didn't know um, but anyway the Lord's not finished with him yet and he would still he would be in heaven so would you, just, would you lift him up please Mike mm -hmm. All right. Um, thank you, Robin, for that. And um, is there anyone here who God has put that burden on to pray for Mike? Okay. Heavenly Father, we come before you acknowledging that you are Father, you are God, who loves us desperately. Lord, you love Mike desperately. God, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would meet him right where he is. Lord, as he lays there, he can't do anything for himself. His mind is working, his heart's working. And, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be speaking to him, ministering to him. I pray, God, that you would prepare him for whatever lays ahead. Lord, whether he has uh, days on this earth or whether he has years, I pray that in this moment of time he would grow ever closer to you. I pray that he would be crying out to you and, and knowing in this moment how kind you are, how gentle you are how loving you are. God, I pray that he would be willing to confess whatever sins he may have unresolved between the two of you. I pray that he would confess those to you, that uh, you would prepare him for whatever life follows after today, whether it's life in heaven or, or life on earth. God, I just pray that you do a miraculous work in him. Father, I pray your mercy would fall on him. Whatever that looks like, we know that we can trust you with him. Lord, I pray for um, Donna and all the family um, who grieves just to, to see him suffer. And Lord, I pray that you would be their healer and their comforter also. We ask, Lord, that you be glorified even through this situation. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, Cindy. Anyone else have a request? Jackie?
this is more of an appeal. I need to find someone, a, a, a man, who speaks Spanish. There, I have a neighbor oh, about uh, a mile away that um, has a brother that I talk to some time back and promised to give a uh, either a Bible. Would, I found out later that it would be better just to give some scriptures, like a God's Little Promise book. And the brother left Midland, but he told me that I could give whatever I decide to bring to, to the brother. The brother does not speak any English, and I don't know enough Spanish to witness to him because we may need to witness to him. In fact, you know, the Lord leads. I think that that would be, that's what we should do. So someone that would not be afraid to witness to him, not just say, this lady is here to give a book for your brother and there is one for you too. So thank you if you know someone or pray that the Lord would provide someone because we're not promised the next day, are we? And this has been on my heart for some time. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Is um, anyone here that God's speaking to that would like to pray about this? Lord, we, uh, we just agree with Sister Jackie that you would raise up that man that can be uh, speaking Spanish and bilingual um, and help Jackie in this situation. We pray <coughs> for this man's salvation. Lord, whether it be through a, a Spanish track, a Spanish Bible, um, God, your word does not return void, so... We pray your word would be planted in this man's heart and that he would be saved and be called into your kingdom out of the darkness into the light. In Jesus' name, amen. Who else? Tony? Um, I just would uh, like to ask for prayer. I have an aunt. Um, she's just a little older than me. We pretty much grew up like sisters. Um, and she is now 75 days clean. Um, she's been in a, in a rehab um, in Colorado. And now, this just as of yesterday, she moved into a, a woman's, um, what do they call them? They, they keep, there's just three or four of them and, and then a leader. And anyway, I don't know if this is a spiritual home at all. I don't know what they teach them or what they preach or anything. but. I tried to get her to come here to, to Teen Challenge, and she almost came, but then decided to do that. So anyway, she, God is working in her life, um, and he's working in my family's life. Um, and um, But I just pray that she, and she has to stay clean in this house to be able to stay stay there. So that's good news. But um, if we could just pray that, that God will just work miraculously in her life, continue to do that, and that... Um, um, through all the things that she's been through, maybe this is what will bring some of her, her siblings, my mother, um, and some aunts and uncles to know the Lord. I don't know. <laughs> and um, so anyway. And is there anyone here that would like to pray for that? Okay. Hang on, Pam. For the, for the folks at home. It's for the folks at home. Y'all can get really quiet. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, first of all, for Tony bringing this prayer request to us for Renee. We know that addiction is a stronghold of Satan and that nothing but you can break her from that. So I pray for Renee. I pray that this house that she's in um, is a Christian environment, and if it's not, that you would bring people into it that would be able to minister to her and help her not only stay clean, but come to know you. I pray for the family, um, again, because we know addiction is, is just Satan's evil plan to keep us from you. 
Um, so I pray that the family has peace in knowing that Renee is being prayed for and that um, God has this in his hands. I pray for Tony. I pray for her mom. I pray for um, all the siblings, um, cousins, that, um, that none of them would struggle with any sort of addiction and that when Renee is able to come out of this, that she'll be able to come back to a loving environment that is, that is a clean environment and a safe environment full of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pam. Brother Tom, you have one? I'd like for us to pray for a young man named Samet, and his wife is Malankia? Maliki. Maliki. Uh, from Turkey, uh, the Lord is drawing them to Himself. We pray that that uh, they would respond. Are they Muslim or? Okay, okay. Is there anyone here that wants to pray for that specifically? Okay. Lord, we lift up Samet and Malika. I think her name was. <laughs> Lord, you know their names, you know them. You you formed them in her mother's wombs. You know them, you're calling them. I believe you're using uh, Tom and Robin uh, and other people and other circumstances in their lives to draw them unto yourself. Lord, we ask that you would speak to them in dreams and visions, that you would wake them up spiritually they would hear your voice and respond lord i'm just so convicted by this prayer request because of my friend muhammad in tucson that i've known for so many years now and i too want to just tack on his name to that muhammad and um I pray for Mo's salvation. I've been praying for him for so many years. Lord, you do speak. And uh, to all people. And again, Lord, we ask that you would speak to these, these wonderful, sweet people through dreams and visions and through circumstances in their lives. Just like you spoke to us. The same thing, the same God. You reached us all. You can reach them. You're no respecter of persons, so we commit them to your care for the, for the kingdom that they would be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Anyone else? Hang on. I just have a praise because, um, you know, I, I know that I'm not the only parent that has a child that wanders. Um, and our daughter has found a, a clean, clear path um, on her education. It's changed her major a couple of times, and so um, that's been straightened out. So my prayer and has joined a punk rock band in addition to that. So my prayer is that um, this, this new path would bring other people into her life that could speak truth um, and, uh, and that God would be glorified by, by some of her decisions. Praise that she's made some decisions. Amen. Amen. And uh, Father, I I just want to agree with Pam and just thank you that her daughter's on a path. Now we we pray ultimately she would be in your perfect will. And I thank you for bringing me off of a bad path myself and bringing me back to you bless you lord praise you for these praises in jesus name amen we um, want to focus our attention on the the giving of our tithes and offerings the plates are at the back of course and you can give online and if you're visiting please have no compulsion whatsoever to to give we just want to give to you today but first i want to read a a verse, if I can find it, Leviticus 2, 730. To, oh, 2730, my bad. If I can find it. Here we go. 
a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. And Father, we, um, we thank you for giving us ability and strength and breath to be able to work and, and do your business. And uh, Lord, you give us every breath. You give us everything we have. Apart from you, we can do nothing. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would take this portion. And we want to give it back to you. And uh, you would pray that you would bless it to multiply your kingdom, further your kingdom, Lord, that you would be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and um, complete our worship. I, I just, I love this song, Hymn of Heaven. It's just so encouraging, so encouraging. We don't know how many days we have left here, but we know it's coming. And so we can just be so thankful. And in the meantime, asking God to help us finish our race well, stay in our own lane, tell others about him, and run the race and finish it well. Um, at this time, we will dismiss children to Children's Church, um, but let's sing the hymn of heaven. How I long to breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets To look upon the one who bled to save me And walk with him for all eternity there will be a day when all will bow before him there will be a day when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died and rose again holy holy is the lord and every prayer we prayed in desperation the songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear in the end we'll see that it was worth it when he returns to wipe away our tears there will be a day when all will bow before him there will be a day when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died and rose again holy holy is the lord and on that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy is the lamb who was slain and on that day we'll join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith and with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy is the lamb who was slain forever he shall reign so let it be today we shout the hymn of heaven with angels and the saints we raise a mighty roar glory to our god who gave us life beyond the grave holy holy is the lord so let it be today 
we shout the hymn of heaven with angels and the saints. We raise a mighty roar. Glory to our God who gave us life beyond the grave. Holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy is the Lord. Holy are you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Give you honor and praise. We bless your name. You are seated high on the throne in heaven, and you see everything, and you are in control of everything, but yet you see in our hearts, too. You see us individually. Lord, we don't, wanna, we don't want to meet you one day and have regrets. Would you come, Lord? Would you fill us? Would you prepare us for that day? We ask it in the powerful name of Jesus, our Redeemer. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. Oh, Randy, you have announcements. I need to make one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just for a reminder that October 22nd and 23rd will be our Harvest Arise weekend. Friday night, the 22nd, if you can't make it, that's okay, but we will be having a dinner and worship. It'll be a great time. You'll get to meet other believers from out of town and across Midland. Um, we will um, just have a great time together. We'll divide up in teams Saturday morning. We will meet, we will get in our teams, we'll pray, ask God's blessing, and then we will disperse all over Midland. And um, if you haven't done that with us yet, we are really excited for you to join us this time. It's going to be awesome. Um, if you um, can just let me know or Tom know, uh, we're just going to, we just need some numbers. We need to put our teams together and we need uh, to know how many are going to be eating that, that meal with us. So um, just want to put a plug in. I'm going to say it until you get sick of hearing it until October 22nd. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robin, for that announcement. We have a couple more. Today we had the baked potato um, being cooked back there. So if you ordered one, it has your name on it, I'm sure. So make sure to get that. And that benefits the deaconesses uh, fund so they can serve the, the church. So glad to have that today. And then also af at the, after the service, we're going to have a meeting to uh, do some planning for the Harvest Festival. So if you're going to be part of that, please be here. It's a very important meeting. So we will see you then. Thank you. Pastor Lonnie. read the uh, the text that I sent, or not the text, the letter that I sent to you guys yesterday, the email. Um, I want to encourage you guys to, to step into that. Um, I really want to encourage us as a fellowship to recognize that to pray and fast for breakthrough, um, to pray and fast for wisdom and guidance. I mean, God has blessed us um, Mrs. Sally Roberts, the things that she gave to this fellowship. But as I said in the letter, we're, we're not needing opinions. We're needing the Father's heart. We need to know the Father's heart and say, God, what you've blessed us with this. What would you have us do with this? All right. If we come and we meet and we come with opinions... The guarantee is this will divide the church. That's the guarantee. Do you hear me on that? But if we come having fasted and prayed and sought the Father's heart, guarantee there will be unity. 
guarantee there will be direction. Okay? I, I put that in because I recognize as a fellowship, in some ways we've, we've, we've experienced building fatigue. I've called it that. That's why you've never, we've never heard anything about that for two years. But we need to fast and pray saying, okay, Lord, what? Because it, we should be excited. We should be intrigued by what God wants to do with us. We should be intrigued about this next, this month, with the different outreaches. As Robin just shared about this opportunity to go out into to Midland sharing our faith. The opportunity to say, Lord, there are medical workers that are tired, that are frustrated. How would you have us bless them? You know, um, Lord, we're, we're going to have people come through with Harvest Festival. How do, we, how do we operate as your hands and feet where you are making yourself known in and through us, right? Or what's going to happen is we're just saying, oh, we had this event, we had this program, that's cool. Instead of Jesus showed. Jesus made himself known. And so I really want to encourage us to be a part of this fasting and prayer. And as I said in the letter, if fasting, because of health reasons, if you're not able to, you know, skip a meal and pray, ask the Lord, what would you have me give up? And instead of that, I will pray. Right? So it's not, it's not like getting so, you know, it's got to be a meal. It could be skip TV watching. You know, you may, maybe... Your, your ritual is getting a, your TV, your, your meal, your dinner, and watching TV. Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to set the TV aside, and we're going to pray instead. So, anyway, I just want to encourage us in that. I, I'm excited about what God wants to do, how God wants to speak to us. Amen? So, on that note, I want us to get into this word this morning. And, and like I said, in, in Romans 12, 1 and 2... This is going to be a second parter to last week's message. Last week's message came out of Romans 6. As we're going through the Bible plan, um, last week we looked at Romans 6, which said, Consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And as we're going through the, the Bible reading, if you're going through that, I hope you're being blessed as I am, because God is really kind of weaving a nice thread of what He is. It's kind of like... He's staying with us on an issue of faith and where we are in faith. Are we on autopilot? Um, or have we taken the autopilot off and say, you know what, it's not just a saying that I have faith in Jesus. It's, no, I'm going to work out my faith. I'm going to live by faith and not by sight, right? And so when we think about living by faith and not by sight and turning that autopilot switch off, the Christian tends to do that. It's easy to turn the, the, the autopilot and just coast in our faith and, and maybe grow lukewarm and where the Spirit of God, though, rises up within us and says, no, no, I've got things for you. You know, are we going to, peep, are we going to be a people satisfied saying that I got saved or that I know Jesus and I'm walking with Jesus because I got saved, because he rescued me, right? And it's that place of, of recognizing that when we say that we are going to live by faith, walking by faith, and let me understand, you know, usually for a pilot that turns the auto, autopilot switch off, they grab a hold of the controls, right? And sometimes there's going to be turbulence, but, but for the Christian, hear me, when we say we're going to turn that autopilot switch off, it's actually saying I'm not going to be in charge, but it's the Holy Spirit that's going to be in control. He's going to be directing my life. He's going to be speaking into my life. He's going to be determining my steps. And that's where the Christian walk gets exciting. Because when we give up control and we give the Holy Spirit control, that's where we begin to step into intimacy with Christ. You and I cannot have intimacy with Christ 
unless the Holy Spirit is in control. He wants to give us intimacy. He wants us to know Him intimately. That's what His purpose is, is so that we may know Christ, so that we may be intimate with Christ. But that happens when we give up control. It happens when we say, you know what, we're not going to coast in life. He also wants to lead us into a life of discovery, what His plans and His purposes are for us. So that when we give up control and He is in control, we begin to see what we're here for. We begin to understand that it's not about getting from point A to point B, but what God is excited about is what happens in between and the plans and purposes that He has for us even today. Like, do you want to know what His plans and purposes are for you today? Or are you like, well, I just kind of know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know what kind of my schedule is. Sometimes the Holy Spirit loves to disrupt our schedule. If we've ever given our life to Christ and saying, take charge, how many of y'all have ever noticed that God likes to disrupt our schedule? I mean, He does it well. He leads us into a life of replacing a worldly mindset to it with a kingdom mindset. If we will give up control. Now here is the whole thing. Do you, when, when I asked the question at the very beginning of this service, how many of us want revival? How many of us want revival for our life? Do you want this for your life? Because the issue many times is a lot of Christians struggle with this, that we, we say we want it, but when we are wanting Him to move, the Holy Spirit to move, we've got to understand that many times it's going to involve us laying aside our desire for comfort. That God sometimes, when He's, when he's moving, He's going to make us uncomfortable. And so it's, it's letting go of that desire that we have for comfort. The worldly mindset wants comfort. The worldly mindset wants comfort not just for ourselves, but for our family. But that may not be what God is, is saying. Listen, I've called you to present your bodies as a living and holy what? Sacrifice. Well, sacrifice is uncomfortable. And the sacrifice is going to be giving up the worldly mindset. It's going to be giving up the mindset that we had before we knew Christ and even maybe the mindset that we kind of took back after we came to know Christ. We don't want to let go of our idols. If we're wanting intimacy with Christ, if we're wanting Him to control our life, we have to recognize that He's going to start dealing with some idols. And that's not going to be fun. That's going to involve sacrifice. Basically, it becomes this. We start lacking a trust for Christ. So the passage that says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you want revival for yourself, it will always involve a renewing. So right now, it's like where the Holy Spirit is moving. As I've been sitting on this, this past week, the Lord has been renewing my mind. And can I be up front with you? It's not been fun. It's not been fun. Because there's been some things that the Lord has had to speak to me that I've had to face, that I've had to let go of for my mind to be renewed and for me to know Him. I, I want us to look at something that as I've been working through this because when we are presenting our bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, holy and acceptable to God, pleasing to Him, that aspect of presenting our bodies to God, that was one of the first passages of Scripture that I memorized as a Christian. And Paul is writing in, in Romans 12, 1, and he says, I urge you therefore, brethren, 
brothers, and, and, and again, I, I learned early on that if you've got the word therefore, you need to ask, what is it there for? Okay? I learned Romans 12, 1 and 2, but because I was not asking the question, what is it there for? I didn't go up above Romans 12, 1. I isolated Romans 12, 1 and 2, which made it even a little harder for me to understand then how do I present my bodies as, body as a living and holy sacrifice and I'm not really going to know or want to do that if I don't understand the truth and the reality that's found in Romans 11.36. Romans 11.36 says this. It ends it, where Paul is writing, but he ends with kind of this doxology, and it says, For from him and through him and to him are all things. I, I want you to let that sit. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God to present, right before that, for from him and through him and to him are all things. And when, when he is saying this, being inspired by the Holy Spirit, God is saying, does my church, do my people, do they live this way? Are, are they, is their faith involved in that? For from him... Right now, when you woke up this morning, do you realize that, that everything that you see, all of creation is from Him? That, that He is the creator of all. I, I put on... Um, so we, we got Stephen an Oculus, uh, a VR. Um, and I've and I, and I, I got to admit, I like the VR. I put his VR set on and I went on the entertainment section where it says a journey through space. And on that VR, it's like you're, you're standing in space and you're looking all around. And as it's taking you through space, and, and I'm thinking about this passage. For from him. For from him means he is, it all started with him all of creation and we read Genesis 1 and we recognize that in the beginning that even before there was a beginning God was and yet he is the one that everything that we see is from him and we can forget that in life and if we forget that then how are we going to present our bodies to him if we don't recognize who he is for from him and through him now that's, it's these prepositions for from him, he is creator. I believe a lot, I believe most Christians say, well yeah, he is the creator of all. But are we living that not only knowing that he's creator of all, but it's through him are all things. Like as he's created all things, that even right now he is involved. in. It's his power right now that's working. Like, here's this. Put your hand over your heart. I just want you to be real quiet and see if you can feel your heartbeat. That's coming from His power at work in you right now. He's the one that's keeping your heart beating. Do you realize, do you and I realize that? That God is the one that's, that's keeping your heart beating. That, that from the moment that you, your heart started beating, it's not just because, but it's God's power, it's God's sovereignty over you that's saying your heart's beating right now because of Him. The breath that you breathe, it's because of Him. It's not this God created and then just stepped back and just said, okay, it's, no. It's like right now, at this very present time, He is so actively involved. It's like He's keeping us alive. He's, he's wanting us to live. And then it says, and to Him are all things. It's not to Lonnie. Put your, put your name in there. The universe does not revolve around us. 
It's, it's going then back to him. It, and, and so, for from him and through him and to him are all things. And so, you and I were designed and made that all that we do is it's for him and for his glory and for his honor. And so, is our faith working itself in that way? And so, in our faith, are you presenting your bodies each day as a living and holy sacrifice? Because it's intentional. It's, it's, it's an intentional act of faith each and every day to wake up and say, I'm presenting myself for you. I, I'm presenting myself before you, Father in heaven. Or are we just going through life? I, I put this out very intentionally. Stephen's going to help me, right? Yeah. He's like, what? Really? Yeah, you can you don't need to flip it right yet. I just want to show this because I was thinking, how do most of us Christians, how are we living our life? If we're not presenting our bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, it may be that we have Jesus and that we know Jesus, but if we're not presenting our bodies as a living and holy sacrifice to Him, then basically the tendency is to revert back to how the old man, the old woman was. And so here's what that looks like. Can y'all see over there or no? Let me put it flat there. So this is our life. This is, put your name in there. You've asked Jesus into your life. He is your Savior. But maybe you've put yourself on autopilot. So Jesus is still there in your life, but he's not at the center. This is how, without Jesus, this is how you and I were. We were, we were very alive to sin and dead to God. But if we consider ourselves dead to sin and alive to God then Jesus is at the center. But if Jesus isn't at the center, after we come to know Christ and we just say we have faith in Jesus, if we just say we have faith in Jesus but we're not working out our faith, this is what our life looks like. And our life looks like this with me, but I have Jesus, and I've got then family. Maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your spouse with your children, maybe it's, you know, your mom and dad, but it's, it's my family, okay? Maybe over here you've got work, or you've got school, but it is, it's my work, it's, it's my school. Maybe over here you've got friends. But it's, it's my friends. Maybe over here it's, it has to do with finances. But it's my finances. Before you know it, you're trying to juggle what all is yours and you're trying to make it all work and you're trying to make it all fit. Now, if you know Jesus, then okay, that's great. Then over here, you, you, you know, maybe you've got, yeah, you got a church. But, but it's, it's my church. Maybe over here, you, we all deal with it. We got time. We got entertainment. We got hobbies. And I'm sure if I kept going, you could add some stuff in there. You know what? When you guys come to church, and it's your church, but if you hear me, and I'm talking about you need to be reading your Bible, you need to be praying, well, over here, you need to add on Bible reading, Prayer. Over here with family, 
Well, with, if you've got kids, you've got, well, okay, you got sports, you got academics. You know, I could keep branching off, right? What, what happens to the person who's in charge that has Jesus? Man, it gets, I, I can only do so much. And, and you know what? You hear this word prioritize. And so I got to prioritize. Well, guess what? If I'm in charge, but I'm being told to prioritize, I'm going to start prioritizing this. But it's going to be my priorities. And if I'm in charge, but Jesus is over here, what invariably, as I'm prioritizing any of this, what's cropping up are idols and strongholds. Because if I'm in charge, my priorities will be my idols. Does that make sense? And so when you get to a passage like revival or presenting your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, you're like, I don't want to let go of some of these things. I, I don't want to realign some of these things. It has to do with right here. Who's at the center of your universe? What is, what is life in its entirety all about? Is it about you or, or are we just like in Sunday school, are we like a mist, but are we here for God? I mean, have you been given breath for God and His glory? Well, what are you living for? Because some of these things on here are good. I mean, I, I can look at some of this and I'm like, well, work and family and finances and Friends, but if it's mine, I'm in sin. If it's mine and Jesus is over here, he, I got saved and I got the insurance policy. What is that going to look like? And we're wanting intimacy. We're wanting to know the Father's will for our life. But we've got these priorities. And to present our bodies as a holy sacrifice, we grow content just to keep Jesus over here. And we're not able, we, we can hear the word, but not do it. And not discover the life of intimacy, not discover the life of, of, of discovering the plans that he has for us. Do, do you hear me? Because it's so important. I believe that the Christians in America are, are, are more here. That's why we are experiencing a nation that is so crazy right now. It's because the bride has kind of got out of whack. We're still in charge. We're not surrendering. We're not discovering. Okay, Kate, Stephen, I need this. I need your help. I'm going to flip it. Lefty Lucy. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So when we talk about, if you've been reading through the book of Romans, you're discovering that there is a lot about the passage of Christ in me. That if we say that we live by the Spirit, walk by the Spirit. And so what happens with a life we're Christ. It's Christ in me. It's where, it's where I am presenting my body as a living sacrifice, and it's Christ in me. And when you look at that work itself out, you have to look at the book of Acts. You have to look at Pentecost. You have to see that at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes in and, and takes charge, there is a realigning of things. He realigns it in, in, the, in the new creation, you and me. He starts doing something very new. One of the things that he realigns, when we look at one of the things in Acts 1.8, Acts 1.8 says, 
you will be empowered. You'll be empowered by the Holy Spirit to bear witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the remotest parts. So, so within the believer that is presenting their body for a living sacrifice, at the very core, what, what happens is there's mission. There's purpose. In Acts 2.42, what, what starts taking place within the one who is presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice, being controlled by the Holy Spirit, Acts 2.42 says this of the believers. It says they were continually devoting themselves to prayer, to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread. So within Christ in me, there's prayer. Within Christ in me, there's, there's the gathering together with the believers. There's the, there's the local church involvement. There's, there's the Bible. There's the Word of God. Notice where I have these things. It's not on the outside. It's on the inside. See, for the, for the, for the me person, it's optional. But for the Christ in me, because it's Christ that's generating. Do you under, do you get, it's, it's not me generating. It's Christ generating. Because when we have surrendered our life to Christ, guess what He wants to do more than anything with you? He wants to commune with you. He communes through prayer. He wants you to talk to Him. And he wants to talk back. And so when there's Christ in me, I'm praying. I discover, it says continually, they were devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching. There was no New Testament. And so they, they got with the apostles saying, listen, what did Jesus say to you? We, we want to hear, we want to discover. Now we have the New Testament. What does Jesus say to me? I want to discover because I'm presenting my body as a living and holy sacrifice. They didn't try to do it on their own. There was something that Christ was generating in them that it was like, no, I've got family now. I, I'm, I'm in this fellowship and so I, I need fellowship. It's not going to church. It's being in church. It's I can't get enough of fellowship with brothers and sisters. Yeah, it's kind of messy. Yeah, different personality. Yeah, here. But no, I need this. Right? In the breaking of bread. The breaking of bread. That's what we're... My handwriting, forgive me. My wife said, please don't write. I'm like, well, it's okay. Breaking of bre bread. The breaking of bread is when they got together and they understood they were church, they broke bread that they communed at the Lord's Supper. Because the Lord's Supper was that constant reminder of Christ and what He did at the cross. It was that constant reminder of grace. It was that constant reminder of His mercy. And that's where Paul says, I urge you, brethren, I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God. It's that place of saying, do you realize that when we, when we are presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, it's a mercy of God? It's not a have to. It's like, no, I discover life when I'm doing that. By the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice sacrifice. I wasn't able to do it when I was in sin. And I'm sure not able to do it when it's me that's in charge, but in Christ, by the mercies of God, I present my body as a living, as a holy sacrifice. And when this is generated, when Christ is generating this, out of that I start understanding how to interact with family. There was a lady in Mumbai. She started coming to our church. She came to know Christ. Her husband was a devout Hindu. She came to know Christ. Her husband didn't. 
She got havoc when she went home. But you know what? She loved her husband. And she did not give up her fellowship for her husband. But when she was in fellowship, we, she was calling us to pray for her husband. And she was also sharing the grief and the problems. And we've got to pray for her and come alongside of her. And it was a difficult time, but everything was about, it wasn't about family anymore. It was about Christ in her and how she was interacting with family. Christ in us, how do we deal with work? Christ in us, how do we deal with time? Christ in us, how do we deal with finances? Let me ask this question. When you look at the board, what ownership do you have here? What, what, what I mean by that is family, you're all in all. Friends. Here is where we find purpose and identity. If it's me in charge, I find purpose and identity in these other areas. I was struggling with this in the sense of, here's what I knew when I was going to preach this message. I figured it was either going to offend some in here, or it was going to say, I don't like this too much because it's hitting too close to home. And there are things that I need to change and shift in my life. Because there's idols and strongholds. Here's what I'm saying. I do believe that some of you or many of you are dealing with idols and strongholds in your life. And I'm not, I don't know what they are. I'm not naming them. I don't know. But I, but I do believe that as I've been drawing this up, I do believe the Spirit has been provoking you in some ways. And here's the choice. This is the grace of God. This is the beauty of God. We either will let go of those idols and lay them, or we'll hold on to them. God does not take them away from us. He, he, he won't. He'll take them from us if we let them go. If we surrender them to Him. But if we don't surrender them to them, He'll say, okay, you can keep going that way. But we lose sight of the intimacy. We lose sight of discovering His will and purpose. We lose sight of letting go of a worldly mindset and discovering the kingdom mindset. I love each one of y'all. Now, some of y'all don't know very well. Welcome. But I love y'all. As I pray this, I'm like, the Lord's been dealing with me on some of these things. But I believe that this is a season when we're being called to pray and fast. I believe it's also a season where the Spirit of God is going to show and reveal idols and strongholds in our life. And when He does, it's not the condemnation of God, it's the conviction of God to take us into a deeper walk with Him. A deeper walk with Him. That's why I said, do you want revival in your life? That question is, do you want to go deeper in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Or are you content? If you are content, I will share this. I don't think you're going to like me very much in the next few months. Because I, I don't believe the Lord has called me to be content with where he's, I, I want more. I want more for Christ, for my life, for my family. I want more for Christ, for my church family. And so I'm not going to be content. I, I, I'm going to be talking to y'all about where you are in your walk. Because I want each of us to discover what it is for Christ in me and not just me and then having Jesus a little bit here 
Amen. I mean, God is moving. He's moving in our lives. He's moving in this city. He wants us to just take part in his work. And I know we're running a little late, but I do pray right now that you wouldn't take notice of the time as much as what the Spirit of God is doing. You've got your cups of communion. I don't want to rush this either. Because Christ in me, when, when, when the early church was being continually devoted to breaking of bread, there was something so intimate in taking communion in discovering God's grace once again. That, that's why the church like did it over and over and over. It's like, we need. We need communion. I think for the Protestant church, many times we're like, oh, it's Communion Sunday. No, I, my prayer is, when we break this bread together, when we take this, this juice, it's where the grace of God is very present to even deal with some of those idols and strongholds. And so even before we do that, in, in, in 1 Corinthians it says, search my heart. Let God search our heart right now. And so I'd just like to invite us first right now just to bow our heads. Here's the thing, and I'm just going to help you with this a little bit. If work has been an idol, and you've been holding on, then let it go. I'm not saying quit. But allow Christ to put it in its right perspective. If finances, if it's been your finances and not God's finances, then let it go. If it's been about family, let them go. Whatever idol could be there, the Lord says, let it go. Father, I want to pray right now for each one of us that where we have made anything seemingly good but put it above you and walking intimately with you, I pray that, Lord, even right now, there would be a letting go. There would be a surrender. Jesus, you surrendered yourself to the cross so that we could actually let things go right now. You've given us the grace, the power to be able to overcome these idols and so to even be able to let go and, and not even know what's going to be the results of the letting go. But Lord, trust you that when you realign our lives and it's about you and not us, it's always for our health and it's for your glory. So help us even right now to present our whole bodies before you. Jesus, in your name, amen. Jesus presented his whole body for you and me when he went to the cross. It wasn't just a little bit, it was his whole body. And I know we've got the little cups, but I, 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 I want us to have the visual. That when they met, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And with your package, just open that up. Take that wafer out. Father, we pray your grace right now upon this, that as we open this up and as we take of this wafer, Lord, we recognize your grace. We recognize that you willingly went to the cross. You willingly took the whipping. Your body was broken so that we could be forgiven. And so, Lord, let us do this in remembrance of you and knowing that even as we do this, Lord God, we are forgiven 
because of the grace given. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't think he had a gold cup. I think it was clay. I got a plastic cup. It was a normal cup. But as he took the cup and as he blessed it, he said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant, my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink this in remembrance of me. Take this and, and, and remember my blood shed for you at Calvary. Father, we thank you that, Lord, when you sent your Son, he came and bled for us. His body broken, his blood shed so that we could be completely forgiven, not just a little bit, but completely forgiven. Lord, would you bless this time as we drink in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Want us to go ahead and stand up? If we could, we'll go ahead and close out. I want to close out with a passage. It's actually from our reading today. This is actually out of Romans 15, 13, and it says this. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. The Lord wants you to go from here abounding in the hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Be blessed.